Okay, let's talk about the MEGA, Elementary Education Multi-Content Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I'm gonna assume you are preparing for this assessment, meaning that you're looking to become an elementary educator in Missouri. So uh, that's excellent. And uh, what we're gonna do in this particular video is look at a math problem that you should be able to handle if you're fully prepared uh, for this uh, assessment, okay? So we'll get into this problem here in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last several years, I've constructed many, many, many online math courses to include an MEGA, Elementary Education Multi-Content Assessment Math Test Prep Course, okay? So uh, I'm going to leave a link to that course in the description of this video, but the way I build all my courses, I do research on, hey, what is the math level, you know, what specifically the objectives are looking for you to do, and then I try to build a customized course that kind of matches that, right? I don't want to over-teach you, but I don't want to under-teach you. Try to get it just uh, right uh, based upon the information that's out there. So if you're looking for a strong math course to help you prepare, um, hopefully you'll check out uh, my course. Again, you'll find it in the link in the description. But um, let's get into this particular math problem here. So the math that you're going to encounter, all right, on this assessment is not just going to be elementary education level math. That's uh, that's really kind of a, um, causes a lot of confusion, not just in your state, but uh, all states nationally, all right, for elementary teachers, okay? So there's, a, I think, at first glance, you know, people looking to become elementary teachers like, oh, all I have to do is know place value and fractions and decimals and real basic kind of concepts. You need to know that. Plus, you need to know high school level math, all right, I would call it. Not, you don't need to know the super advanced high school level math, but you have to know a good amount of algebra and geometry, okay? So it's not just elementary education. So if math wasn't your thing, you need to go back and review and relearn and brush up on all that uh, stuff that you um, obviously learned somewhere along your education uh, history, okay, back in high school uh, sometime. Of course, you've already um, completed college, you know, just by virtue of you taking this test. Well, you likely have uh, completed, but, you know, you already have some math behind you. All the math that you need for this test, you've already taken, okay? You just got to go back, brush up on it, and relearn it, you know, uh, you know, to the point so you can do really well on uh, the math section on this assessment. Okay, so with all that being said, let's get into the actual problem. Now, what I'm going to encourage you to do is to uh, try the problem on your own, and then, of course, I'm going to solve it. So let's get into what the problem is, okay? So it says evaluate the function for x equals negative 2, right? So here I have some sort of function and I want to evaluate it for x equals negative 2. So hopefully that means something to you. Um, so if you think you know what to do, go ahead and pause the video and do whatever you want to do with this problem. Of course, I'm going to solve it. Don't worry about it. You, know, you should try it, okay? If you get it wrong, you get it wrong. Again, this is just feedback for you, right? Kind of see where you're at. Okay, even if you get this problem right, doesn't mean that you're 100% ready for this assessment. It's just you know, a little pop quiz to kind of see where you're at mathematically. All right, so let's get into the problem. Again, if you don't want to see me, you don't want to see the solution yet, go ahead and pause the video, but I'm going to solve it now. So what does it mean to evaluate a function? Well, to evaluate a function, let's look at a, a simpler function. First of all, this little notation here, f of x, we call this f of x. Let's call, let's look at a simpler function. Let's say f of x equals... 2x plus 1, okay? Well, the way functions work, okay, when we're evaluate them, evaluating a function is we're going to plug in a number right here. So let's say 3, okay? So I'm going to evaluate this function for 3. So the way it would look mathematically is I'm going to plug in a 3. So here I have a function, okay, which is just some sort of uh, rule. Okay, so this function has the rule 2x plus 1. So if I'm going to evaluate this function for 3, it means I'm going to plug in 3 anywhere I see an x. Okay, so I see an x right there. So this is going to be 2 times 3 plus 1. Okay, so that's what it means to evaluate a function at a particular value. So in this little basic example, I'm evaluating this function for 3. 
Okay, I would write this this way. F, uh, I'm trying to find f of 3, meaning I'm going to replace the x with 3. And then I'm going to simplify, right? So f of 3, okay, is going to be what? 2 times 3, that's 6 plus 1, or 7. Okay, so f of 3 is equal to 7. So I evaluated this function for 3, and the answer is 7. Okay, so that is a real basic crash course on evaluating a function for a specific value. So hopefully that's enough for you guys out there that were totally lost with this to be like, oh, I remember this, to go ahead and actually try this problem. So you wanna go ahead and evaluate this function for uh, x equals negative two. Now there's another little twist in this problem and I'll get to that in a second, but you should um, you know, have enough knowledge to at least you know, uh, do some things with it. Okay, so let's get into it. So I'm going to evaluate this function for uh, x equals negative 2. So I'm looking for f of negative 2. So this is the way you want to write this mathematically. So anywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a negative 2. And you always want to use parentheses, okay, when you're uh, substituting a value in uh, replacing the variable with a particular value in algebra. So it would look like this, 2 parentheses negative 2 cubed, right? minus parentheses, I got another x here, negative two squared plus two. Okay, so you gotta be very, very careful. Uh, let's go ahead and double check, make sure we did this right, two, okay, negative two cubed. Always wanna double check your work in mathematics. Okay, that looks good. So I plugged in negative two everywhere there was an x. Now I have to simplify this using the order of operations, okay? So uh, first things first, Let's go from left to right and let's deal with this uh, guy right here. Here is a power. I have to do this power before multiplication, okay? Here is a very uh, common mistake. So let's look at two times negative two cubed. Many of you out there, and it's okay if you made this mistake because a lot of people do, they would go, oh, okay, two times negative two, that's negative four cubed, right? And then they would go on and figure out what negative four cubed is. Wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, that's not correct, okay? What you did there is you did multiplication before your powers, all right? So um, order of operations, really one of those areas that uh, students get confused with. So now let's go ahead and look at this uh, separately here. Two times uh, negative two cubed. So you got to do this first. You got to do powers before multiplication. So what is negative 2 cubed? It's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, right? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, okay? But what's the sign? A negative times a negative is going to be positive. Then I have a negative, so it's going to be negative 8, all right? So all of this is going to be equal to negative 8. And let's go ahead and just write that down here. So 2 and negative 2 cubed is negative 8 minus, and we'll get back to cleaning this up here in a second, but let's go ahead and deal with this here now. Negative 2 squared is what? All right, so that's going to be negative 2 times negative 2. That's a positive 4, so let's write that as a positive 4 plus 2, okay? So at this point, if you're able to kind of get through these powers, Hopefully, this is you know going to be uh, easy enough for us to get the final answer without making any errors. So let's go ahead and simplify it now. So 2 times negative 8 gives me, what, a negative 16 minus 4 plus 2. So what's negative 16 minus 4? It's the same thing as negative 16 plus negative 4. So that is negative 20, okay, plus 2. So what's negative 20 plus 2? Hopefully all of you out there are saying, oh, it's negative 18. And if you got this right, I'm going to give you a big uh, happy face and a bunch of stars, just like we were able to do way back in the first grade. And that was many, many, many decades ago for me, but I do remember that. And I was like, pretty awesome. Anyways, uh, if you got that correct, that's a good job. Okay, so you, um, in other words, if you were able to do this without any help from me, and you understood what you were doing, why you were doing it, then that's a good indication that you have a basic, you know, skill set when it comes to functions. Now, 
uh, functions in mathematics is a huge topic. We're only scratching the surface with this uh, problem, but because uh, this is kind of a basic level problem, all right? Now, if you didn't get this right or you're completely lost, well, that's feedback uh, for you that you know you got to do. You got some work ahead of you. Okay. Um, now, let me just give you a little inside secret. I don't want to be sarcastic about it because that's not my point. But teachers do fail certification exams. <laughs> Plenty of teachers do every year. There's many, many, many teachers out there that have to take certificate multiple uh, attempts before they actually get certification. So, what 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 am I saying here? My point is you don't want to go into this assessment without really, you know, my philosophy is just to overstudy, okay, for anything, just overprepare, okay? You don't want to just be like, yeah, I think I know just enough. That's never going to work out, okay? So if math is, you know, an area of anxiety for you, you just want to immerse yourself and get as strong as you can and go in and take this assessment one time, get it done, and, you know, uh, move on with your career, okay? All right, but uh, let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my test prep course for this assessment in the description of the video. Very comprehensive. You know, if you want my best teaching, if you like my teaching style, then you're going to really uh, uh, enjoy my uh, test prep course. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for over 10 years, have hundreds and hundreds of videos already currently on my channel that can help you out, and I'm posting stuff all the time. If you like the video, definitely appreciate it. Thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, what's your, uh, you know, career uh, path here? Are you coming from high school to college to wanting to become a teacher? Did you always, you know, know you wanted to become a teacher? But maybe some of you out there are making a career change. Maybe you were in another career. Maybe you were a real estate agent for 20 years and you're like, hey, I want to teach now. Okay, there's a lot of people who change careers. 5, 10, 15, 20 years or retired military doesn't make a difference. There's a lot of different paths these days to become uh, teachers. And I'll say this much. Um, we need great teachers, okay? And just by virtue of you, you know, watching this video, uh, wanting to become a teacher is a huge benefit to, um, you know, your community, your state, our country, because teachers are badly needed. There's already... Um, a terrible shortage of teachers as it is because it's a, it's not an easy uh, job, but it's highly rewarding and it takes time to kind of build yourself up. It's a lot of education, a lot of certifications you got to go through. It is a true profession, okay, and that's why you got to treat it as such and you know take these certification exams seriously. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.